Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 54 of the Cloud Computing Australia show with Brad Nelson and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. In this week's show we are talking about the Australian government has rushed through a controversial anti-encryption bill that could have ramifications for tech companies all over the world. The new legislation makes it mandatory for any organisation whose website or data is hosted in Australia to give the authorities access to their IT systems if requested. Hi Dave, it's great to have you back on another Australia show this week. Yeah, it's great to be back and this is a great topic. Um, we're uh, dealing with this all over the world right now and this is kind of a good use case for how companies should think about it. Yeah, and a bit scary, isn't it? Let's be honest, it really is a bit scary. Well, I mean... <clears throat> You know, uh, the authorities could always kick in your door and, you know, grab your records and, you know, hard drives and things like that. And now that we're sticking stuff in the cloud, they want, you know, very similar authority, whether it's in Australia, United States, European Union, UK, whatever. And I think we're going to see more of this as, um, you know, people kind of get a little more experience at encrypting things and hiding things. And the, you know, and the, the authorities looking for better ways to go access it and go grab it up. Yeah, it really is. And I guess the opening question then for you is, uh, how is this legislation going to impact the international market? And sort of what problems do you see forthcoming? And uh, I say it's a bit of a three-pronged question, this one. So the third part of the question is, uh, what, what steps do you see companies being able to take then, Dave? Well, hold on to those uh, questions, because I can't think that far ahead, but we'll take them one at a time. Um, ultimately, I think this will affect the market because people will be wary to move in the cloud because they're automatically assumed that these are some things that are associated with them putting information in the cloud or on a cloud uh, versus keeping it on premise. The reality is that the laws are very much analog with what's occurring on premise and what occur occurs in the cloud. They're just trying to get access to information that they would be able to get access at through warrants or through legal actions or things like that. Uh, as they need it, and that that's really kind of what we're talking about here. So really you need to con understand the fact that we're just kind of dealing with things we've been dealing with with the on-premise systems. Now we're dealing it with systems we don't own. The scary thing is, number one, we're you know brave enough to put information on systems we don't own, the public cloud-based systems. And now we have the risk of the FBI and, in this case, the Australian government, government coming into the back-end systems and accessing our data. And if we choose to encrypt it, which is a great way to hide information, they're going to have a way to automatically de-encrypt it or make encryption outlawed, which is you know kind of weird to me. So we get into this kind of uh, spy versus spy, um, which is an old Mad Magazine uh, um, you know cartoon, and in, in, in really kind of encrypting and then having uh, de-encryption for the encryption and then having some other sort of uh, you know, privacy uh, uh, technology pop up and having some legislation around anti that privacy technology. It's really going to get silly, I think, for the next 10 years. And what were your other questions? Yeah, sorry, there was a, a, a myriad of questions I had for you in one go there, so apologies for that. So, yeah, no, look, legislation, as you say, is it's a global big deal with people having to make sure they're, they're um, you know, ticking the government boxes, as it were, for access to, to information that are held on public servers, etc. In the public cloud. So, but what we're looking at, I think, is the next thing is the 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 sort of impact and the problems that you see forthcoming for that market share. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be, um, you know, it, it's going to be we're not going to move in the cloud as uh, as readily as we thought we would. It's going to be um, the security systems are really going to have to adapt to legislation more for more for for you know, more so than in advancing technology. And the reality is I think that even security uh, um, in security technology is going to suffer because ultimately we're looking at moving into a much more secure world in the cloud and encryption really kind of is part of it. And the thing is, is now that we're staying fast and loose with the technology based on who's allowed to de-encrypt stuff and see stuff and what we're allowed to encrypt, we're actually making security much worse. And so the authorities and they're demanding uh, having the ability to get in and access technology, uh, access the information where and when they need it, you know, is actually going to hurt our ability to basically provide the best security possible. Now, I understand their arguments, but they need to understand the security arguments as well. It's really, you know, a, a, a very, um, you know, risky place out there. Everybody's trying to hack into your systems. And if there's some vulnerabilities that are caused, 
because certain things can't be encrypted by some legal uh, determination, some legal um, laws and regulations that are being produced by the, the governments. And then that becomes, you know, not a great thing for the businesses out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the one of the things that I think that um, where we sort of base this uh, show on today, this article, was that um, Amazon obviously has got a, a huge local um, data center within Sydney that hosts a lot of companies that are, you know, big organizations that are predominantly based in New Zealand, um, such as the Zero, Orion Health, GeoNet, um, and you know, it's it's questioning now. You know, the privacy of their or the privacy, <laughs> privacy, privacy, of their of their users. Um, you know, and how that sort of how we tie that in to make sure that everyone now understands the vulnerability to behind where that data is stored and who can actually gain access to that data and for what reasons. So, it's it's. I think it is a concern out there because this, from what I understand, this law isn't actually precedent anywhere else in the Western world. So, you know. AWS have got a slight concern or, or must have a big concern around, you know, the Australian government being able to access such a large resource of data. What do you think? Yeah, I think they should have a concern. And I think that is uh, this probably is a lot more invasive than the uh, regulations that I see certainly here in the States and some of the European regions. I, I think this is going to be they're going to back away from this um, uh, law uh, over time. I think that the uh, businesses aren't going to have it. People who, you know, vote are, um, you know, basically run those businesses. They're very influential, you know, influential in the, um, um, you know, in New Zealand and Australia. And I think ultimately they're going to, um, you know, push this thing away. But in the meantime, it's causing confusion and it's causing concern. And it's one of the things where they're not helping. I don't think they're really getting to the essence of what they're looking for the law to accomplish in terms of their ability to, um, you know, block illegal activities that are occurring in certain businesses. And ultimately, they're not going to encourage the utilization of technology, which really needs to, you know, basically be enhanced right now. And people need to get out of the way, you know, very much like we didn't tax things on the Internet for the first, you know, 10 years of that when the e-commerce stuff started coming up. And I, I, I think that, you know, this kind of stuff is going to be tried. It's going to fail. Ultimately, we need to come up to something more reasonable. And I'm not sure this is going to be it. So, you know, if you're a, a New Zealand business right now, I would be, you know, fairly, you know, upset about this. And I would make sure you ta contact your elected official and make sure you understand that you're upset about it. 100%. And, and I mean, you know, these companies are, as you say, massively uh, influential in, in the economies of of such small demographics such as New Zealand and Australia when it comes to you know population so it, it, it really is something I think the Australians have, got, have rushed in maybe under the radar of, of, the, of the people that, that need to know about it but, um, you know what government doesn't try and rush in a, a, a some sort of cyber legislation now and again um, just for a sweetener but anyway we're, we're side digressing uh, getting too political there um, and we don't get too political here do we Dave uh, so we're going to dive straight no. into your uh, we're going to dive straight into your top three tips then, Dave, if that's, uh, if that's good for you. Yeah, number one, encryption does not allow you to break the law. So keep that in mind. I think that, um, you know, one of the things that the government sees encryption as doing is provide people with the ability to kind of veil information that they wouldn't have access to, which would, you know, basically lead to illegal activities. And so just because you can encrypt things and probably people can't see it, that doesn't mean you shouldn't follow the laws and legal issues and things like that and make sure you're doing the right things. And I think most businesses understand that. But, you know, there's a few that uh, do things that are a bit more shady. And if they think they can encrypt it and no one ever see it, um, you know, they're probably more apt to be a little bit more, um, uh, a little bit more morally, uh, uh, you know, morally deficient. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, count on the government being more invasive for cloud computing as time goes on. I think the reality is the pattern is they were, you know, 10 years ago, didn't know what the heck cloud was, didn't care about it. You know, now that we're, you know, at 30 percent, 35 percent workloads that exist in the cloud, information exists there. Um, and this, the encryption algorithms and other ways of doing privacy within those clouds is extremely sophisticated. Uh, they're getting interested in how they're going to basically get access to the information. And the reality is that the government's always five years behind everything. Um, so they can't keep up because they're not funded. All governments are. They're not funded as well as the private sector. And therefore, they're basically becoming fast followers and trying to keep up with the technology. 
and they're not going to be able to do it. And so in order to be able to uh, keep up, they're basically going to pull people back and make sure that encryption gonna, is going to be um, uh, limited and your use of different technologies are going to be limited. And I think that's the wrong thing to do. Uh, need to consider cross-border issues. And so suddenly, you know, if I'm advising a, a client uh, about l dealing with Australia on, um, you know, next week on Monday after the new year, I'm going to, you know, basically tell them that, um, you know, there's issues they have to consider. And so this is basically hindering commerce because people are going to make decisions based on what countries are easy to deal with. Right now, Australia is extremely easy to deal with. Um, you know, where countries like China, probably not as much so. And you have to understand that this is going to be an international market. Your ability to attract people into your country to do business with your company is really going to be determinant of the regulations and the regulatory environments in there. It's been like that for a long period of time as far as dealing with physical space, the ability to house a, uh, um, a company in certain countries and, and move funds into those countries based on tax rates, things like that. You know, this is going to be no different. Yeah, some interesting points there, Dave. In fact, your second point where you're talking about the government lagging behind, and you said on average, you know, from I guess from your experience, they're at least five, kind of five years playing catch up to where industry is, certainly with the, you know, the cloud tech anyway, the cloud tech world. But what's interesting about this is because they are lagging behind, maybe they've identified a, a shortfall they have in the capabilities of bringing themselves up to speed as an organization. So putting a legislation in allows them to go in through the back door. Uh, and then not even have to deal with any form of encryption when it comes to, you know, monitoring business and, and keeping tabs on things. What, what, what are your thoughts on that, right? That's the way they're doing it. They're basically uh, saying, well, we're a special case and we're going to have a certain hole in the technology that's going to be built directly for us. There's a certain, um, you know, way in which we can, you know, get access to your information no matter what encryption that you have in place. My, my concern about that is they can get access to the information, you know, perhaps those are vulnerabilities that can be exploited by people who are hacking the data. And the bad thing about that, if they figure it out one time, you know, suddenly they figure it out for the hundreds of different companies in Australia who are basically leveraging that technology and trying to be compliant with the law. And so they have to be sensitive to, you know, what their needs are and some of the risks they're bringing into it. And there needs to be a good balance between law enforcement um, and uh, regulatory issues and the ability to do commerce. And I think they need to get more on, more together on this. And this is not just an Australia problem, but you know, China, United States, European Union, the UK, I see this everywhere. And this conflict, this is gonna be something that's gonna, uh, going to explode and get worse more so before it gets better. Yeah, it certainly will. And like you say, you know, once there's, once there's a chink in that armor that could be like an S3 bucket that's just left open or someone who doesn't fully understand the system that works within the organization, it just breaks everything, doesn't it? I mean, we all know that, you know, governments, uh, you know, have a, a, a fantastic track record with looking after personal data. So no one's really got any concerns there at all, really, have they? No, no, I, I guess they uh, don't have a great track record. I, I wouldn't, yeah. I definitely wouldn't trust the government when in managing my information for me. I, you have to not, kind of look at them as a, um, they're not necessarily there to do wrong, but they uh, can be inept at certain things and therefore they can get in the way of certain things. They can certainly break certain things. It's happening now and it's, it's going to happen for a long time. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, what, what damage really could, you know, leaking data through the government do with just an accountancy firm? I mean, zero. I mean, you know, what, what people, <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's just beyond me. It really is. It's beyond me. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it is crazy. And that's why I think a lot of these laws are going to basically be reformed over time as people, you know, kind of push back on them. I see a lot of this silliness occurring in the States, too, and eventually uh, with the Cloud Act probably most recently. And I think, you know, people are going to push back on this stuff. And that's kind of the way it morphs out. We, we come to a, uh, you know, what I call an agreeable end state that seems to you know, meet the needs of the government and meet the needs of the companies. We're not there yet, but we'll be there in probably five to six years. Five or six years, possibly too late. Dave, it's great to have you back on the Australia show. Uh, great top tips. Thanks for being here, dude. Always here. Thank you. And thanks for watching, everyone. We hope you enjoyed watching this week's Australia show. Uh, you can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm on Twitter at Nelson underscore Hilliard. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, everything like that. So come and check us out in the description box. All the links are there for social media. Also our blogs as well. So don't forget to uh, check those out and subscribe to our latest blogs. You get them on a weekly basis. Also, um, we're on iTunes and Stitcher. 
so you can also listen to us not just watch us on YouTube um, and also remember to like and subscribe to the channel uh, which is awesome to have all of your support so that way you don't miss out on any future videos happening um, yeah because we've got some great special guests happening in 2019 so really looking forward to that thanks for watching and look forward to next week